Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of Vool, and in this video we're going to explore what the best way is to make gothic arches. So this video is inspired by a couple of things happening relatively close together. First I went to visit Canterbury Cathedral and you can see this has a lot of awesome gothic architecture. Really, if you're anywhere near the area of Canterbury, it is really worth a look. I was massively impressed and just the idea that this was built so long ago is just mind-boggling to me. And at the same time, there's someone who I assume watched my previous video on using the spin tool asked how to make a gothic arch at a specific size, and that seemed like a fairly important thing to cover because I was just sort of talking through the tool then. So we're going to have a look at a couple of ways of making arches to specific sizes, but before we do anything, what I'm going to need to do is make my overall cross-section. So I've got that there, I've brought in a plane, now two, I'm going to call these meters, just for the sake of it, is far too wide. Let's just scale that down to something that looks a bit more reasonable somewhere about there and then control and a and apply the scale i might need to resize this later so what i'm going to do is make my profile first of all so let's go to vertex mode and then for each of these we're going to bevel the edge you could do this however you want but i want a beveled edge here so control shift and b you can bevel vertices you just need to use control shift and b not control and b which is normal beveling we're going to do there and then i'm going to go into edge mode and there's no really quick way of doing this so what i'm going to do is press E to extrude and then I need to make sure that my transform point is around the medium point and then I'm just going to S to scale that up. Now this is just going to make it not perfect because of these weird angles so go into vertex mode and if you've got machine tools just Alt and A and then just align everything that you need to. We could have done those last two together and then you can do the same on the other side or just Alt and X and symmetrize. That's using Mesh Machine. Right, then we go into Edge Mode and I want to just delete these edges out. So delete and edges because I don't want anything in the center because we're going to turn this into a curve. Now, what I'm going to do is talk through two different ways of creating this or setting this up. So we're going to need to have two of these because we're going to do separate things with them. So Shift and D and then Y and then I'm just going to drag that off to the side and we'll just use that one later. And in this one, I'm going to bring out the end panel first because I'm sure I scaled this, but it's always worth checking. Yes, I did. So right click and then convert to a curve. Remember, if you haven't got the scale as one, control and A and apply the scale. We're actually going to do some various bits with manipulating scales in a second. So that's an important thing to know. So right click, convert to and then a curve. And we can see that now our object data properties have changed to say this is a curve. And we're going to need that later for when we manipulate this. Next, we want to make our arch. So I'm going to shift A, mesh, and then bring in a circle. And we've got the vertices of 64. That should be round enough. And let's talk about this in a couple of ways. So let's R and Y and 90. And we're going to go into vertex mode. And then I'm just going to delete those bottom vertices that we don't want. Now, there is a really quick sort of dirty way of making an arch, which if I just bring this off to the side would be to go into vertex mode, select our middle vertex, which would be this one. And then you could just use something like a sharp tool to G and Z that up and I'm just gonna need to scroll that down and we'll make an arch that looks something like that. Now, that's fine, but I don't actually really like the look of that arch. There's just something a bit weird about it. It goes quite straight at the top. If you like that, it's fine. I just don't really like it. So let's come back here and have a look at our other way of making an arch. So the first thing we're gonna do is we need to get this to the correct size. But, and this is quite important, we're going to do something to manipulate the scale. In fact, let me just delete that and I'm going to bring in a new circle again. And notice that we've got a radius of 1. And that means, if I just R and Y that round, that means our diameter here is 2 because the radius is 1. And we can also see that over here with our dimensions on our Y, which is the width that we care about, is 2. So why do I care about that? Well, the way we're going to make this arch is we're going to actually create two of these circles and join them together. And I want to really quickly be able to move this across so that I have a really nice intersection. And having this dimension as two, while the scale is one, is going to allow us to manipulate that quite easily. You'll see what I mean in a second. So what I'm going to do is scale this up, or actually we can just do this over here. And whatever I want my width of my arch to be, I need to do it double that. So I want my arch to have five meters of width. So I'm gonna put that as 10. Is that gonna look about right on scale? Yeah, hopefully. If not, we can change it. In fact, maybe these need to be a little bit bigger. Let's just change that to individual origins and then let's S to scale those up slightly. That'll do. Let's apply the scale there. So now I need to make a second version of this. Let's go into vertex mode, delete those bottom vertices exactly the same way as we did before. And then I'm going to go into my modifier panel and I'm going to add an array modifier. And that's going to put this here because we've rotated it. But importantly, I'm going to turn off the relative 
and go to constant. And let's put that to zero and we're gonna put the Y to one. Now, this is where the scale manipulation works out quite well because I scaled this up to 10. If I turn this off here, we can see that the Y axis was 10, but the scale of this is five because it started as two. So it's being half what the 10 was. Now, what that means is that when I set this to go one unit across, it will actually go five, which means that's perfectly halfway on our circle. A lot of explanation there for something that just works. You could do this manually by moving it the correct amount along, but I quite like that you can do this quite quickly. Obviously, it took longer because I explained it. Apply that, go into vertex mode, and we're just going to grab all of the vertices that we don't want. So I don't want any of those. Notice that I've left these two here, and we're just going to delete those vertices. And then I'm going to select that vertex. Let's get rid of proportional editing. And I'm going to change this from mix to just edge. So this would work on mix, but I just want to make sure everyone's really clear. We're changing this to edge snapping. And then I'm going to GG. And then I'm going to snap it to that edge. Turn that off. Click the vertex that's out of place. Shift click there. And then M. And then at last. So now we've got our arch that to me has a much nicer shape to it. Now I'm thinking actually I've made this too big. So my apologies for that. Let's scale that down again to about there. Control A and scale. And we're going to need to apply the scale of this now. Now before we do that, let's sort these vertices out. Look, this isn't very nice because we've got these really uniform gaps between them. And then we've got this little stubby thing at the end. So we're going to want to fix that. So I'm going to select all of those vertices. I'm going to go to edit and loop tools. If you do not have loop tools, just go to edit preferences and then type in loop and make sure loop tools is activated because you usefully have this space option, which will now equally space all of your vertices from the most extreme one to the most extreme one. So effectively from this vertex here to this vertex here, they're going to equally space everything out. So let's go to space again and we've got everything nice and neat. Fantastic. Now, as I said, we're going to need to apply the scale for this because our scale is currently at five. Now, this will go wrong or it will cause you a lot of confusion if you don't do this right. And I'm going to explain why. So let's shift D and then Y that across. So I've got my duplicate and we'll make this one go wrong in a second. So the correct way of doing this is before you convert this to a curve, you control A and apply the scale. So this is down to one. Then right click and convert to a curve. At this point everything gets very easy i come to my object data properties go to geometry and then for my bevel click object and then click on my profile oh let's un x-ray mode that so there we go so that's our curve now if we do this the wrong way round, so notice this one we've got the scale wrong if i convert this to a curve and now control a and apply the scale this looks like it's right so this is where people are going to get messed up. This looks like it should work now. That's correctly scaled and that's correctly scaled. But what has actually secretly happened behind the scenes is that while the object has been scaled, these vertices for a curve have a size to them, as odd as that sounds. So when I come here and go to object and then click there, it's five times the size. We don't want that. That's a problem. You can fix this by going into edit mode a, select the vertices and then Alt and S and then scale that down. So there is a way of sorting this. So it's not the worst thing in the world, but then you don't have the definite sizing that we do there. So it is important that you apply the scale beforehand. Let's delete that. So we've got our first arch. Great. Now do notice that this looks a little bit weird here. For this one, we've got this slight angle in that we'd need to fix later, but a pretty good way of making an arch. So that's our Gothic arch using curves. So what's the alternative to this? Well, what we're going to do over here is something slightly different, and we're going to use the spin tool, which I think is faster, but it does have the slight disadvantage of being destructive in nature, whereas this we can still fiddle around with later. We'll talk about positives and negatives in a second. Now, to do this is some important things to understand about the spin tool. So what I'm going to do is select this, go into edge mode, and then I'm going to shift and then right click to move my cursor to there. So let's have a look at what the spin tool does. So the spin tool creates this tool here. And at the moment, it's trying to do it in the Z axis. So we don't want it in the Z axis. We want it on the X axis. And it will spin whatever you've got selected. So if I select all of these edges, it will spin it around the cursor. So I could do that, for example. And you could go further if you wanted to. So you could create your whole arch. And you can do this by certain angles. And you can change the steps so that there's more or less. So at the moment, we're just doing it on this side because we did it in two steps. Great. 
but this doesn't look very specific and we wanted an exact width. So how are we going to manipulate this? Well, the way we're going to manipulate this is by using the origin and the cursor to make this work. So I need my cursor to be exactly the width of the arch that I want. So what I'm going to do is get my cursor to, well, five meters from the center of this. And that's quite easy to do. I'm going to go to options and then origins. And now I'm manipulating the origin of the object selected. I'm going to G and then Y to make sure it's on the Y axis. And I'm going to type in five. So now my origin is five units away from this. Then I'm just going to select this, shift and S. And I'm going to move the cursor to the selected object. So now my cursor is exactly five meters away. That's what I want to rotate it around. Now the final part of this to make this work well is we need to move the origin one more time and we need to move it to the center of where our arch wants to be. So if this is going to be a five meter arch we need this to move two and a half meters or two and a half units that way. So same thing again just g and y and this time minus 2.5 and we've got that there. Now at this point Go to options and turn that off so we don't cause ourselves any problems. So pretty quick to set up. The one thing we need to do is add a modifier to this and we're going to add a mirror modifier. You could do this afterwards, but I think it looks swish when you do it straight away. So we're going to add a modifier. We're going to do a mirror. Now we want this on the Y axis. So I'm going to click Y there and you can see it's bringing it on the other side. Now let's get rid of the X. Now, one problem with this is because I've put this originally onto the minus side of the origin. So always have a look at this. So we've got the minus Y compared to the origin. I need to click bisect and flip as well. And then I need to turn clipping on and that's going to make this work. Then come into my side view. Actually, we don't need to be in side view for this. It works anyway. And then go into edit mode. A to select our edges or vertices. You can do this with whatever. And then come to our spin tool and then I just drag it round. And you can see we get this really cool looking arch. You can change the steps up and down. I've got this at 46, which might be a little bit ridiculous. So you can do this however smooth you want this to be, but you can make this really smooth if you want to. I'll change that to 32 and leave it at that. And then that's given us our arch. So for this to be confirmed, we do need to apply that. And then we've got that sorted. Now do notice that both of these have got the holes at the bottom missing. For this one being that it's a curve, you can just come to here and click fill caps and that will be sorted. So what's the positives and negatives of these two techniques? Right, well, firstly, this one is non-destructive, whereas this one is destructive. So what does that mean? Well, being that this is solid geometry, if I come into vertex mode and start trying to manipulate some of these down, this is probably not going to work as well. Let's have a look. So G and then Z and then scale up. I mean, it works okay. So you can do things with this if you want to. Whereas for this one, if I go to edit mode and then G and then Z this down, this will have a much better arch to it because at the moment it is still working off of this being a curve and beveling off that shape. So if you want to make these sort of more flatter, stouter arches, like you can see in the photo here, this one might be a better method whereas this one's going to be a bit more of a pain to do. You're not going to be able to do that as well with the curve tool. But there are negatives to this, for example, and I know this seems minor, this doesn't actually have a flat bottom to it, which means that if you want to make these columns, you're going to have to do a little bit of extra work with it. I mean, you can just go into edit mode, E and then Z, and you've got that there. So it's not the worst problem in the world, but it's just worth noting that if you leave this by itself and then you're making the columns separately, you will find yourself having a little bit of a gap there. Whereas here, everything's sorted. You can just go into vertex mode and then E and then Z that down and you know there's going to be no problem. Or if you're doing this as totally separate objects, say for example, I wanted something else and I bring in a cube and bring it just there, you know that it's going to be flat and therefore you've not got a problem. So that's one other thing to bear in mind. The other positive about this curve method is that this is still sort of non-destructive because we're using this profile. So for example, I could S and scale that down and that's going to scale this really nicely on that arch. Whereas this one, if I was to scale it down, it starts scaling the width as well. So definitely some positives and negatives of both. It just depends what you want to be able to do and normally just what you prefer as a workflow. So there we go two methods of creating arches. As always, please do hit that like button if you found it useful. It really helps the channel as it means that YouTube is going to share the video to more people. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. And if you'd like to support the channel further, we have a Patreon where you can throw in a few dollars a month. You get these tutorials a week ahead of time without adverts, and you also get access to a great Discord channel. Have a great day, guys.